Don't see this as just a challenge for purposes of the 3rd of November. And on the 3rd of November, on the 4th of November, it's over, we're done with. Well, no. The whole point of being here, why you're here, is for an education. And learning to make these connections is going to strengthen your ability to make those connections in other courses, in other topics, across your degree, and then beyond the campus. Most students in law and society try to approach this, the exam, from what I describe as an algorithmic mindset. You have algorithmic thinking, and you have heuristic thinking. Algorithmic, you're thinking of an equation. There's a set of rules. I input data, and it provides me with an outcome. Simple as that. Heuristic thinking is different. Heuristic thinking is encouraging you to learn through trial and error, through experimentation. To succeed in law and society, to succeed in this exam, you need a combination of algorithmic thinking and heuristic thinking. Most of you are preparing for the exam algorithmically, trying to memorize concepts, memorize definitions, memorize facts of cases, and then hoping that the question is going to be formed in such a way that you can just input the answers. I promise you that is not going to help you succeed. You need that base, but you also need to be thinking heuristically. Meaning, how should I formulate this answer in a creative and interesting way? The relevant terms are the terms upon which the questions are built. The bulk of these terms are going to be on the exam. Um, are there any high concepts that are not known that are the exam? No, they're not. Can you draw upon other ideas that are not on this list? Yes. You are welcome to. I go as far as to say you are encouraged to. But what I'm saying to you is that these are the terms you need to pay most attention to. And you should be able to define, to explain all of those before the exam. What I also want you to do, and this is where the heuristic element comes in, is create relationships between them and create relationships that make sense. So if you are thinking about Pickles v. Bradford, could you come at this by connecting it to Bruce Emery? Well, of course not. That makes no sense. Could you connect Bruce Emery to, say, individualized justice? You certainly could. That would make a whole lot of sense. So really what you want to do is take, at this stage, the most obvious connections and think of one term in relation to the other. Now, it's not enough to make the connection. What you have to do is articulate the connection. And you have to articulate it in a clear and concise manner. The best way for you to study is going through these exercises. Seeing which terms you can connect and then articulating the relationship in a clear and concise manner. And that is where I say you start thinking heuristically because now you've got to be telling stories. So it's not enough to be able to say, this is what happened in the Metro Water v. Gladwin case, and then water as property, and that involved water as property, and blah, 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 and there. No, no, the relationships, explaining them, understanding it. As I said to you on Monday, think if you had someone sitting there across from you and you wanted to tell them an interesting story about a case that you had just learned about. You can answer these questions in one page. The reason I'm saying to you a page is because I'm saying to you that roughly 400 words is probably enough to answer this question. You have to spend a lot of time organizing and deciding which part of it is relevant. Practice outlining answers. Ask yourself questions, practice outlining, and practice delivering your answers in the most concise and succinct manner possible. I accept bullet points. I accept flowcharts. I accept pictures. <laughs> but keep in mind, you still have to answer the question.
before exam day, what you should do. One is you should gain perspective. Scan the whole of the course. When you're looking at these terms, think what is the law part, what is the societal part. Scan the whole of the course and say, if I were to tell a story, if I were to write an essay, if I were to provide students with an outline of this course, what would I say about it? Don't look to your notes. Don't take out the book. Just sit there and think. And then tell a story. And see what you can say about it. Don't study to memorize. There's a variety of ways of making the connections, which means there are a variety of ways of answering the questions. So when you're studying, study to understand. And study to articulate that understanding. The narrative. There's a story behind everything. There's a story behind Korematsu. So Korematsu is not just about internment. It's not just about law in times of crisis. It's about people and how the law affects people.